In this video, I'm taking you into one of the legendary Seven Sisters. Find out what one of the most prominent buildings of Moscow's skyline looks like from the inside. Only two of the famous Stalinist skyscrapers are entirely residential, and I was lucky enough to have been invited into the one on the Katilnyuchuske embankment. Hello and welcome, you're watching Anna Explains. And I'm Anna. It's been a while, but I'm glad to be back. In this video, I want to give you a sneak preview of what life's like for residents of one of Moscow's best known buildings. An apartment in the Katilnyuchuske skyscraper is not just prime real estate, but it's also a chance to become part of history. Built in the 1950s, this legendary high rise building is a perfect example of Stalinist architecture not strictly a style, rather a time frame for architecture and interior design, it's still known for its signature monumental forms and luxurious furnishing. Only the creme de la creme of the mid-century Soviet establishment were given apartments here. No mistake, I said we're given and I meant it. The Soviet government gave homes to its citizens according to their social status. Apartments here came fully furnished, including parquet floors, kitchen units, grand furniture and spacious bathrooms. They say Stalin himself chose who would get an apartment in this sister. For example, famous Soviet ballerina Galina Ulanova lived in a large 140 square meter apartment here. And this place that she called home for nearly 50 years now operates as a museum. So if you're ever in Moscow, this is your free pass into the legendary building that is otherwise closed to the general public. I was invited to visit a gorgeous renovated apartment that strives to preserve its historical features. Dasha and Zhenya are both investors and moving into this legendary building was a dream come true for them. They kindly invited me over to show how history meets modernity in their lovely home. We start in the living room, and I'm instantly drawn to the original features of this home. A grand ceiling light, beautiful French doors in mint condition, and oak parquet floors with a detail rarely seen in Russian homes, ventilation vents. Dasha tells me that regardless of the room's modest size, it's comfortable because of the high ceiling. The bedroom is a large bright room with sufficient storage space, a large bed, and a sizable vanity. Moving on to the bathroom, we see that it has been fully renovated, losing somewhat in charm, yet gaining in functionality. Kitchens are the heart of a Russian home, so I was excited to see what this one was like. I want to draw your attention to a few interesting details, by the way, in this spacious by Moscow standards kitchen. There are two very uncommon features here, a functioning rubbish chute right next to the sink, most Russian homes do have rubber chutes, but they're located outside apartments on the common staircase. These individual rubber chutes turned into a big headache for homeowners because, well, they caused a cockroach infestation, but not here though, everything's fine here. The other interesting feature is a back door. They only exist in pre-revolutionary homes and in grand Soviet builds. Why? Well, because they're not fire exits, they're servants' entrances. This building was designed in the early Soviet days, in the 30s, for people who were expected to have cooks, cleaners and nannies. But what really got me in Jane and Dasha's place, though, was their terrace. This is beyond rare in Moscow. We're a nation of crammy balconies, usually. And also, did I mention that we're actually a 20-minute walk from the Kremlin and from Moscow's top tourist attractions? And the views from here are just mind-blowing, making it top-class property. Of course, this is an exceptional home because this building was set out to be like a city within a city. The infrastructure here is quite fascinating and unique. Apart from having its own grocery store, post office, restaurant, uh, a bank, it even has a cinema theater. Every floor in the wing I visited has its own architectural feature. For example, uh, I visited an apartment with a large terrace while the neighbors upstairs enjoy unusual rounded windows and gorgeous bay windows. If you're interested in buying or renting, 
I've got the figures for you. Now, Moscow is notorious for high property prices. The smallest and probably trashed apartment will set you back some 470,000 US dollars, while prices for luxurious apartments will go above 4 million US dollars for an apartment. Most people rent out their inherited properties, and the price range for rent is again quite substantial from 1,000 US dollars per month to 6,000 US dollars per month. That's it from me. I'm so grateful Dasha and Jenny invited me to their home and showed me around. I've never been to a private terrace this size in Moscow and I hope that you enjoyed it as much as I did and enjoyed this episode. I like to keep things interactive here so please let me know in the comments if you missed anything or if you want to know more about something. Um, I'll do my best and I'll see you next time and please 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 subscribe and like because we're starting this channel from scratch and when it really matters it will help us. This skyscraper was partially built by prisoners and it sparked many legends. People say uh, they left messages all over the building and some believe that foremen wouldn't go above a certain floor, afraid that they'd be thrown off uh, by the prisoners. Um, but the architects that I spoke to about it say that it's nonsense. <laughs>